I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies. And today you've got just me for a Q&A, so I'm just going to dive right in. And I'm going to start with Trevor J. Lynette often talks about you don't hold it, you don't own it, and also about third party risk and hence private storage companies. However, it seems the following YouTube video titled Class Action Against FBI for Abusive Seizure and Civil Forfeiture, Viva and Barnes, suggest even private vaults have third party state agency FBI risk. Is this a risk from your perspective? or an aberration. Look, here's the reality. Desperate governments do desperate things. And if I were not on YouTube, I and when I was not on YouTube, I would hold my gold in hidey holes in my house. I had a condo back in the day and I created all sorts of really hidden places. So, you know, these days I do work with a part third party vault, but it's because I'm so visible. If I wasn't, then I would still prefer to hold my gold and my silver as close to me as possible so I can access it whenever I need to. Now, for those that are interested, just ask your consultant for the one sheet that I put together years ago with some different ideas on where to hold it. But the bottom line is true. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. And even though I certainly feel a whole lot more comfortable with a private vault versus a bank vault, uh, because private vaults will also hold many other things, not just, you know, certainly not just gold and silver, um, it is a risk that you're running if you're not holding it yourself. And uh, Steve K asks, I am fairly well qualified in technical fields such as mathematics, sciences, etc. I cannot understand how inflation equates to a covert tax. That is a great question, Steve. And th it's very simple. When it costs you more to buy the same goods and services, that's the same thing as if the value of the currency didn't change and then they put a tax on top of it. The difference between the two is that the government does not have to go through legislation to authorize that tax. They can just work with the central banks, which should be pretty apparent to most people, that uh, to devalue the currency and that's why it is a covert tax, because by design, the currency devalues over time via inflation. And I hope that explains it. I mean, it's, it's actually pretty simple. If it costs you more because they've devalued the currency, it's just taxation without legislation, because that's part of their plan. And Russell H. asks, how do you know this reset will happen? There are others who are not so sure. Well, history, 6,000 years of history, tells me the most likely outcome. Additionally, they have to reset the system because the current system is based upon debt and the ability to constantly grow debt, which may feel like, well, they've been doing it forever, they can do it forever after. But the problem is, is there is no value, no purchasing power value left in the currency. And just going back to what we were just talking about, inflation, when you see or, you know, what's happening in real estate, what's happening in, in I mean, in food inflation, when you get to a certain level, which is where we are, this isn't something that's in the future, it's where we already are. And the tool that the central banks have to regulate the rate and speed of that inflation, they're anchored at zero, right? Which means they go to negative. Since there's no purchasing power, virtually no purchasing power left officially, and the central banks cannot, you know, they're going into negative rates because 
they can't raise the rates, it would con it would crash the debt markets, which are the biggest markets in the world. They have to reset all of that debt so they can start again. And keep in mind that even the new system that they're talking about, the CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies, they're all that I could find to justify creation was debt. So I am a hundred percent, I mean, there is not one little doubt in my mind, but that they have to reset the system into a brand new system, which is really, frankly, what they've been talking about since 2009. So this isn't anything new. What's new is that it's really overt, that we are going into a brand new social, economic, and financial system. And, and frankly, I mean, anybody that says that they're not so sure does not know history and doesn't understand what's happening. It, it's, this isn't something that's going to happen. This is something that we're already walking through. Does this world look the same as it did two years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? No, no. The system died in 2008, and it was just covered up until they could put a new system in place. So, yeah, it has to reset. There's just no option, period, period. I know this will happen. And I also know this, over 4,800 times, when they do that overnight revaluation, they do it against gold. They take something that has no intrinsic value, fiat money, and they revalue it against something that's all intrinsic value. And I say gold is all intrinsic value because it's used across the entire global economy, period, end of discussion. So Will R asks, can the federal government ever go bankrupt? Well, officially, kind of no, because they can create the money to repay the debts, but hyperinflation is a tool that advanced governments used, used to repay those debts with a currency that has zero value. And frankly, that is part of the strategy that we utilize here at ITM Trading as well, just doing the same thing that the governments are doing. Of course, we can't print our own money. That's why having physical gold and silver in your possession is more critical today than, frankly, it has ever, ever been. And then Brittany W. asks, but, but can the federal government ever go bankrupt um, you know, kind of, yes, I think morally they're already bankrupt. So it just kind of depends on what we're looking at. And Brittany W. asks, can you give an example on how junk silver or American eagles might be used to barter during hyperinflation? How does a person go about determining the value of the product, i.e. eggs or milk in silver, if during hyperinflation, the value of silver in terms of fiat is constantly changing. Well, the prices for everything are constantly changing during hyperinflation. And at that juncture, it becomes very apparent to everybody that the value of the currency is losing val its purchasing power value really rapidly. And if you do go into the grocery store, like for eggs or for milk, you know, all the grocery stores have scales all over the place and everything is tied to the computer. So it would actually be quite simple to give you in terms, and, and if you've traveled overseas, you know, you know this as well, It'd be very simple to give you that this dozen eggs is so many ounces of silver versus so many pieces of fiat money. That would actually be pretty simple because what a merchant is going to look for and what anybody is going to look for is something that holds its value better. So when we go to a pure barter situation, the difference between, say, silver and this cup 
is that silver is more universal. And that's also what gives it its value because both physical gold and physical silver, again, they're used across every single area of the global economy. And therefore there is always demand, maybe sometimes more, sometimes less. But 100% of the time, there is always demand. And so what holds its value better than real money? Nothing does. But any talent that you possess, anything physical that you possess is also barterable. The difference is if you have strawberries and I have blueberries, you know, well, and I want, it, I want your strawberries, but you don't want my blueberries, I have a problem. So silver is universal. And we saw examples of this really when we went back to the sovereign debt crisis in Europe a few years ago. And the way a lot of people were surviving were pulling out their silver and gold and utilizing that to keep their families afloat. And frankly, that's also what's happened during the pandemic with a number of countries that have used the, some of the gold that they've had in reserves to buy the things that they've needed during the pandemic. So, you know, history tells us that you will be able to utilize those much better to survive what we have already begun to walk through. And, and it should be really apparent, but... I guess it's not to everybody. To me, it really is. The world is a much, much different place. So this week, I am headed over to Kingston, New York, my hometown, for the Freedom, Peace, and Justice Festival that's being hosted by Gerald Salente. And we also have Judge Napolitano is going to be a keynote speaker there. I'm so excited about this. And it'll be nice to walk down memory lane. So we're taking a few extra days and you're going to be able to see all the behind the scenes um, on Instagram and on Twitter. Instagram at Lynette Zhang and Twitter at ITM Trading underscore Zhang. And don't forget the podcast. So we're going to be doing some, are we going to be doing some extra podcasts while we're there? And I'm talking about, you know, going down memory lane and looking at the different places where I grew up and I went to school and I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that my favorite pizza place was still there, et cetera. So, and then a, certainly my daddy's development. And of course, Gerald owns the building where it's right around the corner from the bank where I got my very first banking job when I was 15. And I, it was a grocery store then. And I used to go there and get melon and cottage cheese for lunch. So, I mean, that was really fun when I got to go there the last time I was in Kingston, which has been a number of years. And at that point, I really did not have very much time to go anywhere else. So this time we're making sure of it. And I think you guys are really going to, um, I know I'm going to enjoy seeing it and hopefully you guys will too. So if you have not already though, make sure that you subscribe hit that bell notification. We'll let you know when we're going live. And, you know, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment and make sure you share, share, share. Because without any doubt whatsoever, we are already walking, uh, marching rapidly to an over overnight reset. And you want to be prepared. So here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And it's actually quite, it's bigger than gold and silver because in order to be as self-sufficient and independent as possible, food, water, energy, security, as well as that barterability, wealth preservation, and community is so, so important right now. Freedom isn't free. Freedom isn't convenient. But boy, oh boy, it's more important today to secure our future, our children's future, our grandchildren's future. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.